There's a brand new tool that, in my opinion, has the power to significantly alter our ability to find gold. Detector Maps has just integrated LiDAR into their app and it's nothing short of revolutionary. For those of us who spend countless hours scouring old diggings, tracing elusive quartz reefs, or chasing the subtle signs of old workings, this changes the game entirely. Suddenly you're not just relying on topographical maps, satellite imagery, or your boots on the ground. You're seeing terrain with laser precision. LiDAR reveals microtopography you would never spot unless you were standing right there in the field. Faint old diggings, collapsed shafts, abandoned sluice lines, hidden tailings, they all pop out like beacons. It's like having x-ray vision for the bush. In a state like Victoria, where most gold has already been found and the challenge lies in seeing what others missed, this isn't just a new layer on the map, this is a new era of prospecting. So I'm going to show you how I'll be using this tool to find more gold. First off, full disclosure, Detector Maps contacted me and offered me either a sponsorship or free access to the app. Because it's so valuable, I opted for the free access. So this video is a form of sponsorship, but with that being said, to be completely honest with you, if I discovered this on my own, I would have gladly paid the monthly subscription to use it. LiDAR is something I've been wanting to incorporate into my tool belt for years, and you'll see why in this video. Firstly, let's take a look at a known field that's littered with shafts. These alluvial diggings in Denali were chasing a deep lead, an ancient buried river. The work here is so significant that you can see the shafts on satellite view. This is thanks to the fact that the area is deforested. But what about when forests blocked the view? What about if it was lesser known? Heck, maybe it was so unknown that gold maps never even included it. That's where LiDAR comes in. So my goal with producing this video was to find a place where there are no real gold maps, that either has no listed gold occurrences but was worked, or an area where the gold occurrences contained little to no useful information, and an area known as Lalal fit the bill. After this, I'll show you an area that was never known to have been worked. So I've seen firsthand how streams appear to have been worked near the township that aren't listed as being worked on any maps. But LiDAR allows me to research this area in a way I couldn't before. I'm going to focus on the Mount Doran area because it's listed as a major gold deposit. Here, you see an abundance of unnamed pits and shafts. The only way you could really get much information about the area is by digging through old trove articles that were written when the area was worked. But LiDAR offers a much more compelling picture. Firstly, this is the area on satellite view. You can't really see much. Now let's peel back to vegetation. When we do that, we can see that this area wasn't underworked. It was actually smashed. And there's immediately a feature I never would have seen if it wasn't for LiDAR. Check this out, the old miners found a gold rich stream that isn't even listed on Geovic or Google Maps. The listed waterway stretched south, but they worked this waterway from east to west. It might have been a very shallow stream or even a shallow buried river. Either way, it contained enough gold for it to have been heavily worked. Without LiDAR, I'd have to step out into the field to find something like this, and I may glance over the significance of this not being listed on any maps. As I followed the river, I noticed something between the hills. This looks like a line of reef that was chased and worked. I can see the tailings piles stacked near the opening, and it appears that the old timers found a gold bearing quartz that was depositing its treasures into the nearby stream. Now you can see why they wanted to locate this. There was enough gold being shed that the valley has been pockmarked with shafts and pits all the way down the length of it. Check out how much they smashed the top part of the stream. They opened it up into a big pit. It looks like gold was being shed from two main reef systems to the west and northwest of the stream, which they located and mined. Some gold may have shed into other gullies from these quartz reefs, but they weren't as rich as this one as is evidenced by the intense workings. In fact, LiDAR has allowed me to piece together the fact that this was probably one of the richest gullies they worked in this area. Another thing it's shown me is that gold is mostly concentrated on the eastern side of the state forest over the west which is largely devoid of workings. So this is already concentrated in my exploration area in a matter of minutes. So as you can probably tell, we can see the gullies really well with LiDAR. One thing that sticks out to me is this area here. If gold wasn't shedding from this hard rock working down this area, then where was gold shedding from? It's little occurrences like this that pique my interest. If I really wanted to get a clearer picture, I could cross-reference the topography here with the LiDAR map and try to deduce where gold is shedding from. But it's these lesser known and lesser worked gullies that sometimes yield the riches because they weren't heavily sampled. I can see that they did try to put down a few shafts on the mountainous area to the west of the gully to try to find the hard rock gold source, but I can't see any evidence that they actually found it. Then there's the aforementioned east to west working that was done. This wasn't a small task. 
There are hundreds to thousands of pits and shafts dug to reach the alluvial gravels here. But what's missing is any indication that they found the hard rock source. If this area didn't cross into privately owned property, this would be my exploration area to try to locate the hard rock source. What's clear to me after using LiDAR is that this area was heavily worked for both alluvial and hard rock gold. We have clear trenching that we use to either locate a reef or to locate plast deposits, and this field is very underreported. Now, when scouring these maps, you do need to take into account the gradient of the gullies and their potential to slowly mask over old workings over time. Check out this area near the Black Eagle Mine. This is a line of reefs that worked. I'm unsure if it was one mine or multiple mines that sunk shafts here, but this is very clearly a hard rock mine. The nearby gully isn't as pockmarked as previous areas we looked at, but if you look very closely, you can see that there are indeed numerous alluvial workings and that this is quite a steep gully, so with every flood these workings are slowly losing their visual features to pop out as much as the other areas we looked at. So let's sum this up. What can we see here? We can see which streams were richest. We can see which streams were traced to their hard rock source. We can see whether the hard rock source was found and whether it was worked. And more importantly, we can see which areas were never traced and which areas likely still have reefs in place. This is fantastic if you're a hard rock miner like I am. If you're an alluvial miner, you can see subtle gradients where streams that were worked were missed, like this area here. We have two test pits that were put down, but they dug on the wrong side of the stream, and they would have missed if any substantial gold exists here because the stream curves inward before joining to the main branch. And of course, if you're a detectorist, you can map out areas that are more promising by reading the visual features of the land from former alluvial workings to hard rock locations before heading out saving you time and increasing your chances of striking something special. Now let's look at what I consider to be the most important and fascinating feature LiDAR opens up, the ability to trace barely worked goldfields. So we're in the Brisbane Ranges now. This area had one major goldfield, which you can't prospect for gold in anymore, only gemstones, which is ridiculous, but that's besides the point. So you'd expect major workings here, that's a given. But what about areas far from it, where gold has never even been mentioned? Well, this is where things kind of blew my mind. At first I thought maybe the runoff from the ranges can be so intense that it carves open the streams that run from it. But now I really do think that gold was worked in these streams and the reason I think that is because the ranges contain numerous shafts and pits all throughout it. And the streams themselves bear that familiar, I've been torn open look that is so common when a waterway is worked for gold. And it becomes clear that they weren't just chasing alluvial gold, they were putting in deliberate, systematic effort to find hard rock gold. There's shafts right at the top of steep hills, and there are also random shafts along gullies. Unlike Denali, where the shafts are very clear and numerous, you really need to look closely here. And areas like this are exactly what I hunt for. Now this begs the question, if this is the case, why am I showing it? Well, the entire place is illegal to prospect in, so I'm using it as a way to highlight how this tool operates in the lesser known to practically unknown fields. Whilst this area is illegal to work, you can bet that there are others that are perfectly legal to work in, many, many others. So I've highlighted just a few ways you can use LiDAR, but there are many more. If you enjoyed this video, leave me a comment below letting me know and if you want me to check out a specific location, include that in the comment. I'd love to make a LiDAR series where we investigate areas and I try to read them. One thing I've yet to do is cross-reference the LiDAR with deep leads to see if I can find shallow sections of them that could be worked. Please note that Detector Maps is still in the early access stage of development. Along with LiDAR, we have an abundance of other tools. It highlights the locations of significant nugget finds and cross-references it with the trove articles that describes it. It contains geochemistry, national park boundaries, historic gold map overlays and much more. Detector Maps charges $150 per year for access to its LiDAR layer. That's only $12.50 a month. And there's a solid reason behind it. This fee isn't arbitrary. It's the result of a licensing agreement with the government that requires Detector Maps to pay annual royalties and data fees to access and distribute high-resolution LiDAR. In other words, they're passing on only a fraction of what it costs to make this technology available to prospectors. But here's the real kicker. 150 bucks is the equivalent of less than 0.9 grams of gold at today's price of 5,205 Australian dollars per ounce. That's a speck, just a tiny bit of gold. Easily found with the kind of hidden diggings, reef lines and alluvial runs that LiDAR now reveals across Victoria. One overlooked gully or old trench you'd never spot on satellite could more than pay for the subscription. If you're serious about finding gold, this tool doesn't cost you money. It saves you time and multiplies your chances. Also do note that the LiDAR function is still being rolled out, 
so some areas don't have it applied yet. Thank you to Detect the Maps for allowing me to use this awesome app. I've already found so much, including one very promising spot, and I found it almost impossible for me to pull myself away from the screen. I'm scouring through the state at the moment. I hope you found this as interesting as I did, and as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.